Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are all of the books that I ended up reading in March. I ended up reading 15 books in the month of March but I'm not talking about all of them today because a few of them are for a video coming out in April so stay tuned for that <laughs> um but yeah I read quite a few books this month and as y'all would have noticed I did not come out with a mid-month wrap-up I'm slowing down my reading I have been doing other things that take more of my time and I'm actually pretty settled with that. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I feel like I'm also making sure that I'm picking up books that I think I'm gonna love because I used to just pick up books because I'm like oh done with one let's pick up another one and I didn't really take the time to figure out if it would be like a five star worthy read or not you know. Anyway so let's get into these books. I'm going to be going in chronological order of when I read them in the month. I haven't done regular wrap-ups by the way in a long like I want to say over a year I have not done regular wrap-ups where I've had to remember a book that I read a month ago because <laughs> I've always done like mid-month wrap-ups so like after two weeks then you wrap up everything you read so I don't recollect this book like at all. <laughs> this is a Midsummer Kiss by Tamara Gill. I believe I listened to this on Libby. And I love how the summary on Goodreads is in another language. Like, I'm trying to get English, y'all. Where, where, where's the English summary? Because I don't remember this. Okay, I'm reading someone's review because I completely forgot about this book. Honestly, I don't remember this at all. But apparently the hero walks into the wrong room. Oh, wait, no. Okay, so this guy is apparently a rake. I remember now. He's a rake and he's supposed to have a rendezvous with this woman at a house party, but she ends up sending him to the wrong room and that's where the heroine is. And he tries to like seduce her while she's sleeping, not knowing that that's not the girl he's supposed to hook up with and then people walk in on them and then they have to get married and the hero has this huge fear of intimacy and blah blah blah. It kind of reminded me of The Duke and I by Julie Quinn which is not necessarily my favorite Bridgerton book but I think I picked this one up because I had an inkling to listen to a novella and so this is novella length and it was on my Libby and so I think all the other books are as well so I might dip my toe in the, into the other ones if I'm feeling a novella. Tropes for this one it's a historical romance it's a it's also on Kindle Unlimited it's a novella and you have a ruined heroine. Next I have Redemption of the Heart by Moni Boyce. Our heroine in here was in an abusive relationship and that ended up actually landing her in prison and she just now got out. She really wants to focus on making a new life for herself and they have her in this halfway house for ex-cons. She ends up getting a job at this restaurant that the hero owns. The two of them end up meeting and there's an immediate spark between the two. They just fall right on in essentially, but there are things from both of their past they don't know are intertwined that would definitely make their relationship very rocky and they don't know about these things. I don't wanna spoil that for you because I feel like you need to learn it by yourself, but it was like, whoa. Wow. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed this one. It does get very emotional at times, so just be aware of that. Um, there is triggering in here for past trauma of an abusive relationship and past trauma from losing a loved one. For tropes of this one, you have a hero who is a chef. Yeah, but emotional romance, it's interracial romance, and I got it off of Libby, so maybe y'all will too. I know I'm like flying through these. I don't I don't remember these. Maybe this was a bad idea to stop doing mid-month wrap-ups. <laughs> Because I don't remember like anything. My memory, I have the memory of a goldfish, I swear. So the next one is Dreaming of You by Lisa Kleypas, the second book in the Gamblers of Craven series. This is the romance about Derek Craven. And after reading this book, I can see the appeal to Derek Craven now. I get it. I understand. This one was actually really, really fun. So our heroine in here is Sarah and she is super fun. She is a writer and right now she's researching her next novel when she bumps into Derek Craven who is the owner of a very notorious like gambling den, gaming hell den. I don't really know what they're called. I forgot. Derek is a self-made man. We met him in the first book in this series. He's very damaged. He comes from a very troubled past but he's kind of worked his way up in the world and his business is now like very well known. Sarah ends up saving Derek's life one night in an alley and from that moment on they cannot get each other out of their brains, cannot stop thinking about each other. I honestly think I loved Sarah more than Derek. Okay, I get people love Derek, I understand. But Sarah y'all, I love her so much. Um, She is like full on in research mode in this book and is like gonna take in every single piece of information that she can. She wants to go to this gambling 
uh, Den so badly and just is like, please let me come in there. I need to write notes. And then she becomes kind of engrossed into this world and the people in this world like welcome her with open arms. And I will say one of my favorite scenes that I can recollect is there's like this masquerade event at the gambling place that Derek owns. Sarah like lets her inner like goddess shine and I love her. I love that scene. And like some of the men who know her that like work at the place are like, wait a minute, that's, that's Sarah? Like, huh? And even Derek has that moment where he's like, huh? <laughs> I did thoroughly enjoy this one. I love Lisa Kleypas and um, I can finally say that I've read about Derek Craven now. Tropes of this one, you have an author, a writer, our heroine is a writer. Um, you have a bad boy because Derek Craven is a bad boy. Okay. Character with glasses, Sarah has glasses. It's a historical romance, it's opposites attract. You have a rake hero and um, a scarred character and a self-made man. I decided to pick up an alien romance. Okay, I picked up Her Alien Farmhand by Honey Phillips. Honey Phillips like writes like these short, like slice of life, like alien romance novellas that I just need when I need like something different. You know what I mean? I need something different. I need a palate cleanse. The heroine of the story ends up getting set up on a blind date by her best friend on some alien holiday. I don't know what, but there's other aliens on this planet. And the heroine has this farm that is like in trouble of just like shutting down. Um, things just keep breaking and nothing's really working out for her. She's trying to go into the city to find somebody to help her out basically. And the hero and the heroine meet because she mistakes him for her blind date. And um, they kind of have some smoochy smoochies until she realizes, oh wait, you're not who I was supposed to meet, but that's okay. <laughs> and then, um, they somehow get talking about their jobs and everything and turns out he needs a job and she's gonna hire him to be the alien farmhand. And from that point on, things start happening between the two of them on this farm. I don't know why, but I'm a sucker for alien romances that happen on a farm. I couldn't tell you why. Could not tell you why, but uh, I think I just maybe love farm romances in general, like ranch romances. Doesn't matter if they're human, doesn't matter if they're alien, I think they're fun. So for tropes for this one, you have alien romance, aliens on farms, <laughs> faded mates, there's a faded mate aspect in here. Um, forced proximity, cause they have to live on this farm together. Um, and the only place to sleep is like, I think he sleeps on the couch in the house, if I'm not mistaken. Kids on Kid Unlimited, there are knots in here. If you know, you know. Um, there's a mating bite, a one night stand to more, and it is a novella. I'm going to be coming out with a new releases vlog towards the end of April. So I'll deep dive more into this next book in that video, but I ended up reading The Friendship Study by Ruby Barrett. And whoo, I loved this book a whole heck of a lot. The cover intrigued me, the cover brought me in but then the story as a whole just made me fall in love with this. This is actually another blind date story. So I kind of read two blind date books back to back. So um, our main characters, Lulu and Jesse are set up on a blind date by a mutual friend and it doesn't really go great. They don't have the best time. Both of them aren't really open to dating at the moment, uh, but they just agree because their friend said, that they set this up. They kind of think they'll just never see each other again. So they're really surprised when they see each other at a friendship study that the local college is putting on. They're both gonna be participating in the study and the main focus is just to study how adults are able to make friendships. And I love that part of the book because it is so hard to make friendships as an adult. It is incredibly hard. And the big rule about this study is that you cannot fall in love with other participants because it's a friendship study. And that's a big problem for Lulu and Jesse because the two of them are actually starting to fall for each other the more time they spend together. I loved this book. I adored this book. I could have raved about this book. I think I did rave about it on my stories one day. Like I could not stop gabbing about it. There's a lot of great discussions that I loved in here. There's neurodivergence representation, queer representation, chronic illness, chronic pain representation. I just love the discussion of everything. I specifically love Jesse's chronic pain representation. I don't love that he's dealing with chronic pain, obviously, but I love seeing that representation in a book because I deal with that daily, as do many of my other fellow chronically ill or disabled viewers out there. I did not really anticipate seeing myself in Jesse, but I totally did. I also just love Lulu. She was so unapologetically herself. And she's this character that I kind of, I feel like strive to be like sometimes, like I, I love her. In Lulu's quest to make friends as an adult, she feels a lot of self doubt and imposter syndrome and girl, do I feel that literally daily. This book kind of showed me like, yeah, it's really hard to make friends, but you kind of, you kind of have to put like your toe in the water. You got to go in the deep end. You got to go for it. You can't just sit in your house all day, even though your social anxiety is telling you to. If you want friends, you got to go get them. I just love this book. I could not recommend it enough. I adored it. I need more people to read it. Trick warnings in here for discussion of past sexual assault 
and a parental figure who has dementia is on page. Tropes for this one, you have a brooding hero. It's friends to lovers. There's again, the chronic pain rep, the queer rep and neuro neurodivergence representation. Um, it's forbidden and there is longing. There's also a use of mobility aids, which I really appreciate it as well. I gave this book five stars. I love it. I need more people to read it, please. If you want to pick up a novella that gives you the hating game vibes by Sally Thorne, I recommend Dancing with the Enemy by Cassie Mint. This one was a fun old time and it gave me the hating game vibes. Both of our main characters in the story work at a company together and they bicker and banter all the time. They say that they hate each other and they can't stand each other. But then there's this company party that the two of them are going to where things kind of change up with a dance. So it was really fun. It's a short, quick read and definitely gave me the Hating Gabe vibes. This one has great banter. It's hate to love. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There's logging. It's an office romance and it is a novella. Next I have Mountain Man's Bride by T. Thomas. So our heroine in this story, she needs money. She has been recently diagnosed with type one diabetes and she cannot afford any of the treatment, any of the insulin, nothing to help her stay out of the hospital. Like she keeps going to the hospital because she's almost dying and doctors are like, uh, you need to start taking this medication. She's like, I literally can't afford it. And so her best friend ends up signing her up for this <laughs> mail order bride situation where our hero is a cowboy rancher dude. And in his parents will, they said that they can't get their inheritance, which is a large sum of money unless they get married. And so that's why he gets a mail order bride and he finds the heroine online. She ends up coming to him to his ranch where his brothers live as well. And he ends up finding about her type one diabetes and he just goes all in to help take care of her, help support her in any way that she needs, buy her all the medical necessities that she needs in order to live. It's a short book. So the two of them just end up falling in love with each other, obviously. Uh, it's that that easy, that easy for them. Um, but I did really like the type one diabetes representation um, because it kind of is a roller coaster in this book, like where she starts to get a little better and then it goes downhill a little bit because I mean, that's what happens when you're chronically ill. It's not just an incline of you getting better and better. There are dips and valleys. So I really did appreciate that in this book. Tropes of this one, it is a closed door clean romance. Um, there's Insta Love, it's a mail order bride and it is a romance with disability representation. I decided since I loved Ruby Barrett's The Friendship Study so much, I picked up another one of her books. I only think she has three books out, but the only other one Libby had for me is The Romance Recipe. This is a sapphic romance where both characters work together. So it's a workplace romance. Um, one of them owns this restaurant and the other one is a head chef at the restaurant. And just their romance. Um, there's a little bit of animosity between the two, but um, they are also hardcore crushing on each other and they don't know how to tell the other person and they don't think they will ever because they don't want to ruin their professional relationship. And just, there's a lot of inner workings in here, especially because it's a workplace romance. There's things that both characters are going through. It's a lot. This book talks about a lot of different things, uh, but to make it simple, these two women just end up falling for each other while working at this restaurant. I will say I loved the friendship study more, but this one was still like a fun, enjoyable read and a very hot Saturday epic romance, I will say that. For representation here, you have bi representation. Another character is a chef, uh, a foodie romance. Um, there's a reality show element in here because the chef was uh, on a reality show a few years ago and that's how the owner of the restaurant ended up finding her and wanting to hire her because she was on this reality show. Um, and it is a sapphic romance. Then I have Yours Until Dawn by Teresa Medrios, which is a historical romance. Look at this stunning step back. I'm obsessed with this. So um, every single month I end up reading a historical romance and vlogging my experience reading it for my channel members. And they get an exclusive reading vlog of me reading historicals. Um, so if you wanna be a channel member, the link to that is always in the description of all my videos and you get exclusive videos every single month. Um, so if you wanna know my thoughts on this, go check out my channel membership. But this book is a historical romance about the hero and his nurse. So the hero, is um from coming from war i think he was a naval officer if i'm not mistaken and um i think the boat ended up exploding and he lost his sight he needs a nurse or the people who work in his estate is like they, he needs a nurse he needs help because um, he's this grumpy grouchy man who just hates the world right now and so the heroine gets hired to be his nurse and the two of them end up falling for each other for tropes for this one you have many caretaking scenes i love that caretaking scenes glow in this book um character with glasses the heroine has glasses a damaged hero great banter, historical romance, and the heroine's a nurse. So I wanted to add that in there. Um, but yeah, if you want to know my thoughts on this and what I thought about this book, be sure to go check out my channel memberships. Next is a darker one. This is Dark City Omega by Elizabeth Stevens. This is the first book in her Beasts of Gatamora series, which is the series she's currently 
working on and currently writing. Um, this is an interesting world. It's like our world, but like fantasy, but also post-apocalyptic. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's also an Omegaverse book. I've only read this author's sci-fi romances and I really did love those. So I was excited to pick up something new from her. This was really unique and I don't think I've read anything like this. I don't know if there is anything like this book because of like the world setting that I told you about. It's like our world, but fantasy, but also post-apocalyptic. And then there's this Omega verse element in here too. I heard one of the story, she is an Omega. She just realizes that she's an Omega and um, she's trying to find safety because people are out to get her because she's an Omega. And um, she ends up getting attacked by this alpha. And little does she know that, that alpha is her fated mate. And that's why he attacked her. Um, and it's their very complicated, very complicated relationship, okay? It does not start out the best. <laughs> and that's all I want to leave you with because I don't want to spoil anything, but this book gets pretty dark. There are trigger warnings in here for guns, violence, non-con, kidnapping, and blood. And then for tropes, you have Captor Captive, It's a Dark Romance, Enemies to Lovers, kind of fantasy or paranormal. I don't really know how to categorize that. It's like a, a thing all in itself. Faded Mates, Omegaverse, there's magic involved. It's, there's a shifter element in here as well. And definitely the hero says in here, that's my wife, which... I love that. I decided to pick up another um, audiobook novella. So I picked up Main Agenda by Brenda Jackson. This is a second chance romance. Both of our characters ended up meeting um, on their spring break like 10 years ago, maybe? I think. I don't know. They're both in college. They met a while ago on spring break, had this phenomenal week together in spring break, like hooking up, being with each other, having a grand old time. Okay. But they split ways, but they've always held each other in their minds ever since then. Um, but the heroine has this like idea in her brain that her mother kind of put in there because of what her mother went through with her father where she's like I'm never going to be in a relationship until I have succeeded and achieved all of my goals in life or else a man can leave you high and dry if you depend on them so I'm going to make sure I set myself up for success I'm not going to be in a relationship until I've done everything I've set out to do uh, but then the two come back in contact at this club one night and um the hero's like nope you're gonna be mine now like, this is like fate that I'm seeing you again. You pop into my thoughts like all the time. So I don't really care about your rules because I'm gonna pursue you. Cause I, you you know, like this is right. This feeling is right. So yeah, it's their second chance romance. Tropes for this one, it's a black love romance. It's a novella on audio and it is second chance. And the last book that I ended up reading in March is Alien Tyrant by Ursa Dax. This was Tiffany and I's Beam Me Up book club pick. We read books, either alien or monster romances every single month. And we have a live show discussing the book that we picked. Um, you can go check out my April TBR to figure out what book we're reading in April. We're really excited about that one. Um, but I finally read this book and I was really excited to pick it up. Tiffany was as well. We both really like Ursa Dax, but we've only read her like holiday alien romances. So I actually really enjoyed this one. Um, you can go check out our live show. I'll be sure to link it down below if you want to know more of our thoughts and just our thoughts on alien romance in general because we talked about a bunch of other things <laughs> in that live. The heroine of the story ends up getting kidnapped by her own government along with other women to help perform this task, this mission on this other planet to figure out, I guess if it's inhabitable, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, it goes awry when like the ship kind of falls apart by some alien creatures attacking it on this other planet. And the hero ends up saving our heroine and he immediately knows that that woman is his fated mate. But there's this huge language barrier between the two. They don't know who the other person is. They don't know each other's languages. So it's very interesting. Um, Tiffany and I had a grand old time reading it and I definitely want to continue on with the other books. There are trigger warnings in here for kidnapping and death. And tropes, you have alien romance, it's fated mates, it's on Kindle Limited, there's a language barrier, and there are tales. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all of the books that I've read in March. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And also let me know down below what your favorite book of March was. I would love to know. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me what emoji we're gonna do. Let's do any yellow emoji in the comment section down below. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.